if you have seen a nameplate of a circuit breaker then you would have seen this parameter which is called as first pole to clear factor now what is this parameter and what is the significance of it what does this parameter indicate we are going to talk in detail about the first pole to clear factor in this video also in the end we will also look at one simple example wherein we will calculate the trv that is transient recovery voltage that appears across a circuit breaker right so to get all these details you need to watch the video so when we talk about a three phase system we know that the three phases are displaced by 120 degree from each other they are not perfectly in phase with each other right and what does that mean let's consider this example of the waveforms that you can see on your screen so if you see the r phase it is getting zero at let's say zero degrees now y phase will reach to its zero value after the 120 degrees of the r phase and after the y phase has become zero after that 120 degrees the b phase will become zero right they are displaced by 120 degree apart from each other that is what happens in a three phase system and when we talk about circuit breakers we know that circuit breaker opens or trip at current zero condition right whenever the current reaches to its zero level at that time the contacts of circuit breaker separates that is the basic fundamental that we know so definitely if in three phase system if the phases are displaced by 120 degree apart from each other that means each phase is is reaching its zero value after 120 degrees that means the circuit breaker will also open at the gap of 120 degrees right so let's say if r phase has opened after some time the b phase will open and after some time the y phase will open right not all the phases will open simultaneously not all the phases will open at the same time right so let me quickly show you one current waveform where the circuit breaker has opened and then the current has gone to its zero level so here you can see the waveform which circuit breaker has uh, just opened so r phase just open at this position right here and after that the current has become zero but if you look at the y and b phase it has opened after some time of the r phase so when r phase is opened the y and b phase are still in the closed condition right and that sort of creates some problem what is that we will talk about it by the way i am really excited to announce that we are coming up with a new course on circuit breaker wherein we will talk about the secondary schematics of circuit breaker we'll talk about the closing circuit we'll talk about the opening circuit and all the logics in the wiring diagram of a circuit breaker currently if you are interested in this course then you can register your interest i'll provide the link for that form down in the description or if the course is already available i'll provide link for that course down in the description you can go and check it out this will be really really helpful because you can go from beginner to advanced in the circuit breaker schematics so definitely click on the link below and do register your interest you can suggest some of the topics that you would like us to cover in the course and we will design the course accordingly so let us consider this is our three phase system and this is the circuit breaker that we have connected uh, a three phase circuit breaker that we have connected here in the system and there has been a three phase fault here a symmetrical fault now if you are interested in knowing what is symmetrical and what is asymmetrical faults i have a very easy to understanding video on that i'll provide link for that down in the description you can go and check it out for more details so there has been a three phase fault right here now once the fault occurs the circuit breaker will open now let us look at the waveforms when the circuit breaker opens so let us first focus on the waveform shown here in the uh, bottom which shows the current waveform so let's say here the blue phase has opened for the first time the first phase that is opening is the blue phase and you notice the moment the blue phase opens there has been a transient recovery voltage that has appeared across the contacts of the r phase right this is the first phenomena but uh now the blue phase is open but still the red phase and the green phase are still in the closed condition they are still not yet open right 
after some time the red phase has opened and you see immediately after that there has been a transient recovery voltage across it now if you want me to make a video explaining what is transient recovery voltage then comment trv in the comment section below after the red phase uh, the green phase has opened and immediately after that there has been a trv across the contacts of the green phase right now it has been studied it has been observed that the first pole that opens right the first pole that opens will have to face higher amount of transient recovery voltage than the other two this has been studied and this has been observed also there is a calculation for that which you will find in the respective iec standard right and first pole to clear factor indicates that differentiation so it indicates how much additional trv voltage that the first pole needs to carry uh, when it opens first pole to clear factor is basically ratio between the transient recovery voltage that appears across the first pole to the transient recovery voltage that uh, you will see when all the three phases are opened right so if you look at the proper definition of first pole to clear factor then it is first pole to clear factor is the ratio of the power frequency voltage across the first interrupting pole before current interruption in the other poles to the power frequency voltage occurring across the pole or the poles after interruption in all three poles now this definition is very very easy to understand what you have to do for better understanding you have to divide this definition into two portion so the first thing that you need to remember is that first pole to clear factor is a ratio right now if it it is a ratio then there has to be two values okay, right then only we can have a ratio so the first value that i see indicating right here is the power frequency voltage across the first interrupting pole now whatever pole is interrupting first now this depends at what instant the fault is occurring it could be r phase it could be y or it could be b as well so the power frequency voltage across the first interrupting pole before current interruption in the other two the first pole has opened there has been a transient recovery voltage across it but the other two poles are still in the closed condition that is the value 1 the second value is to the power frequency voltage occurring across the pole or the poles after interruption in all three phases so whatever power frequency voltage that appears across all the three phases uh, that is the second value and first pole to clear factor is basically the ratio of these two values right now if this ratio would have been 1 that means the transient recovery voltage that is occurring across the first pole to clear will be same than compared to other three pole as well but if you see the name plates then you will find the values ranging from 1.3 to 1.5 right now these are not just the random numbers definitely there is calculation behind that which you will find in the respective iec standard now iec has defined the first pole to clear factor rating wise and also fault wise right so this first pole to clear factor indicates now if let's say it is 1.3 that means the first pole that will clear or that will open the uh, open in the fault condition will have to sustain 1.3 times the power frequency voltage than the all three poles poles compared now using this first pole to clear factor we can calculate the transient recovery voltage that may appear across the first pole that will open in case of an fault so let us look at that now iec has given a formula to calculate that which you can see on your screen now what we will do we will consider one simple example of 145 kv circuit breaker to understand this so here uc is the transient recovery voltage that will appear and which we will calculate using this formula ur is the rated voltage and here we are considering it as 145 kv kpp is the first pole to clear factor and which is indicated as 1.3 by the iec standard now this values whatever we are considering are for terminal faults now if you look at the iec standard of circuit breaker they have defined the factors for different faults so for terminal fault it will be different for out of phase conditions it will be different so whatever consideration we are doing here is considering the terminal fault so in that case it is given as 1.3 
KAF is the amplitude factor which is again defined by the IEC and which is 1.4. Now if you put this value in this formula, the resultant TRV that you will get is 215.47 kilo volts. Now this is the transient recovery voltage that will appear across the first pole that uh, will open in case of an in case of a fault. Now this transient recovery voltage which will appear across the first pole is higher compared to the power frequency voltage that appears across all the three poles when they are in open condition. And definitely the circuit breaker must be able to sustain that. The manufacturer of circuit breaker needs to make sure that all the three poles are capable of sustaining these high transient recovery voltage because we do not know which pole will open uh, first. It depends upon at what instance the fault occur. It could be R phase that will open first or it could be Y phase or it could be even B phase. So when you see a transient recovery voltage mentioned as 1.3 or 1.5 uh, um, on the nameplate then it indicates that the circuit breaker is capable of taking this high transient recovery voltage without any problem. But if this is not the case, if the circuit breaker is not having any first pole to clear factor confirmation, then there is a possibility that the breaker will restrike, the arc will restrike in case of an fault and then the fault will continue which can harm the complete system. But that is not the case, that should not be the case. The manufacturer should make sure that the the breaker is complying with these IEC standards and for that they have to do the type testing wherein they prove that the circuit breaker is capable of taking this high transient recovery voltage. So that is first pole to clear factor. I hope you have understood it uh, and this video was helpful to you. If the video helped you then do like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing. And do subscribe my channel for such easy to understanding videos. So that's all for this video guys. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.